So we are starting with a Q&A with our lovely Corinne from Switzerland, the land of lovely chocolate and nice watches and nice mountains that was moved from Holland. Okay, let's move on with that. Okay, good. So we have questions. What questions do you do have, have today? Let's go for it. Yes. The first question will be, how do one bring out the ideas from the spirit wheel? How does one bring out or capture the ideas? Yeah, I think it's more like how do you put it in action? How do you bring out? There are, there are two ways of asking the question. The first way is how do you bring out or how do you capture? Those ideas are there in the realm of the spirit. Mm -hmm. But how do you bring it out? The Bible says in, in Ephesians, the eyes of your understanding being filled with light. You see, light is called photo. Mm -hmm. Photo is like a photograph. Okay. So when you're, what we call photograph is simply light at different densities. Okay. So when your eyes are filled with light, it captures the eyes of your understanding. That means right in the real you, it opens. Your understanding opens and it is filled with the light, filled with light. What is light? Revelation. Okay. So the way you capture it, you capture it by being open to the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. When you have fellowship with the Holy Spirit, He begins to drop things into your spirit. See, the Bible says the spirit of a man is the candle of the Lord. Yes. The spirit of a man is the candle of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So your spirit is a candle and a candle needs light. Yes. So candle is not light. So the candle needs to be lit up to shine light to others. Okay. So does, does that make sense? Yes. Absolutely. So basically, the Bible also says that is, is it, there's a spirit in man. And the inspiration of the Almighty gives us understanding. So the inspiration of the spark of God coming into you lights up you on the inside. Does okay. that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. I hope you got that. The way you capture it is by being sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Allowing the Holy Spirit to actually help you flow better. Mm -hmm. You begin to hear words. You begin to see pictures. You begin to have visions or dreams. Or <clears throat> it could be many things that happen. While you pray, a thought goes through your mind. Capture it. Yeah. You see a picture, you capture it. You hear sound, you capture it. It's very simple. And how do you bring the sound and the pictures into reality? How do you bring it into reality? The first thing you do is write the vision, write the thing down and make it play. Yes. Write it down and say, this is the idea. I just got. That's why you have a dream book mm -hmm. or you have a dream uh, part of your iPad. You just yes. write your ideas. You see, there, there are no stupid ideas. It's only stupid if it doesn't work, but it's working, you're a genius. <laughs> so, <laughs> so always remember this. Those are some of the things you have to yes. learn. So, but... Um, you, to get them implemented, write the vision down. Make it plain. Write the vision, then make it plain. How do you make it plain? Find out what is required to get it started. I hope that helps you love the people who capture it. Okay, how is the sound? How, how are we doing? Are we flowing now better? Is the video and everything fine? I want to make sure we're, we're in good shape. We have Karen Henke. Hi, the Henke. Hi, Hi, Henke. Right. Karen, hello, Karen. Yes, yes, I know her. her. Yes, Karen I Hanke. Came to she came to Hamburg. Yes. Hello, how are you? It's good to see you. It's good to see you on live. And we answered the first question. I think that was a very right. good one. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Let's go to the next one. Let's go to the next one. Okay. Someone is asking, how can we walk in divine wisdom? How can we walk in divine wisdom? How can we walk? It's not how can we... First of all, you have to have it. You have to have divine wisdom first. And then how do you work it out? Action. Mm -hmm. We need corresponding action to everything we're listening to. So to walk in divine wisdom, it means you have to act based on the Word of God. Okay. It's very simple. I think it's very practical. It's a very practical thing to do. Are you with me? Are you with me, right? So this is what I'm talking about. We have to understand how to walk in practical wisdom. How do you walk in practical wisdom? He said you need wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. So you have wisdom from God. Then you have understanding or application of your wisdom. 
how does it apply to the situation? And then you need knowledge. How do I make it work in this particular situation? So I have understanding application, mm -hmm. and then knowledge is the details of the application. It's like an app. Yes. You have to have the details of the app, how it works in the background. That's mm -hmm. your knowledge. It's called your knowledge base. So you have your knowledge base, then you have your application or your understanding. You have to have wisdom first, the idea, mm -hmm. then understanding, and then knowledge. Those three things all work together. The understanding, is it the understanding coming from God, exactly from the Holy Spirit, or is it your physical understanding? It's both. Both joined together? Yes. You see, the thing is, God gave us a beautiful thing called our mind. Right. Our minds are beautiful. You see, that's why the Bible says, be transformed by the of your mind. So when your mind is renewed, transformation takes place. You become what your mind is. The Bible yes. says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So basically, when you have your mind renewed by the word of God, something amazing starts taking place. You begin to become the word made flesh. Do you understand what I'm saying? I yes. hope you can understand that, all right? I hope that helps you. Okay, let's go to the next one. So, what is the secret of finance in ministry? What is the, the secret of finance in ministry? Is number one, vision. No one sows to you because oh, they sold to you because there's a vision. Vision brings provision. I think sometimes that's the biggest mistake people have. It's like, oh, I want to, uh, uh, we cry about things. People don't, they don't give to sinking shit. They That's give to a, play, a, a ship going somewhere. Yeah. So your vision is, you have provision for the vision. So people saw to what, what you have a vision. Yes. So, and the other thing about uh, financing the vision is to sow seeds. Is to sow seeds. That's one way God would meet your need. As you sow seeds, if you have a need, you sow a seed. Sometimes you give up to get in. Mm -hmm. So you have to know how to sow seeds in the kingdom. Because that's the principle of the kingdom. Jesus said, if you don't know the parable of the sower, how would you know the rest of the kingdom? That's so, th this is the foundational thing of the kingdom. The kingdom is about a seed. Mm -hmm. A man plants a seed. So, if you want to finance anything, it starts with a seed. Always begins with a seed. A seed in your hand is useless, but a seed in the ground guarantees a great harvest. But you have to qualify the ground which you sow in the seeds too. Okay. So, the ground must be good ground. That means a ground that's producing wisdom, pr producing results. So those are some of the things you have to learn how to do. I hope that helps you lovely people. May I ask you, you said you were telling about the vision, that you need the vision. That means also you are sharing the vision, that the people can catch the vision? That would be called vision casting. You're casting the vision. Mm -hmm. So you have, you, you're molding the vision. In other words, you have people. The Bible says, the Lord gave the word, the vision. Okay. But great is the multitude of those that accomplish it. Yeah. That means those that accomplish it are a great multitude. So the thing is, God gives the word, but then the people, the strength of the vision is the people. So you have to mm -hmm. share it with people. Yes. But not everybody qualifies to hear that vision. So you have to share with people that have the same passion as you, mm -hmm. and they also are loyal to, to the vision of God in your life. Yeah. It's very important. Yes. So I think that's a, a very good one. And this is another one here. They have something online here. Okay. This is how do I know my dream is my dreams are from God? Number one, it's not selfish. It's always for the good of others. Mm -hmm. It involves people. See, those are three things. It is not selfish, it's for the good of others, it involves people. And it's bigger than what you would have done by yourself. God doesn't give you small dreams, He gives you big dreams and He does in a simple way. That's how I know it's God. Yeah. But sometimes the enormity of the vision can be so big that you panic. Oh God, this is too big for me. That's why you need Him. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very important we don't forget that. So I hope that helps you. It gives you a very basic answer. It's, it's very, I, I know there's a profound answer that's basic. I hope that helps a little bit. Okay? And here's another question. Did we get clear vision before we start? Or does the vision become clearer when we step out in faith? Do we get a clear vision? Sometimes you can get a clear vision. Like God can say, go across the street. But sometimes you don't see the whole thing. You just obey the first instruction. Go across the street. Just go across the street. There you will meet a man. You meet a man. And they'll tell you what to do. 
So there's a link. It's linked by your obedience. Every time, every act of obedience, it's just a push of that. Okay. So God sometimes just gives you step by step that you can handle and he doesn't give you the final picture. Yeah, but he, can, he will give you the final picture, but he also gives you the step by step. Why? Okay. Because the Bible tells us that the footsteps of the righteous are ordered. That means God orders every step. Mm -hmm. So you have the vision, but you have the steps ordered. To, be, to, to order something means it's already been put out there to produce a result. That means I have ordered your, your book, I have ordered your car. That means mm -hmm. it's available to you. The footsteps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. God has already placed an order for you, for the provision you need to fulfill the vision. Okay. okay. That's very clear. Okay. Yes. I hope this is helping you. Can I take one more here? Yes. What are some strategies to help my family know Jesus? Tell them about Jesus. <laughs> there's no big strategy to it it's just simply you tell them about Jesus you know right. and one thing you do is by your lifestyle they will read it and know just love them then you know one thing is sometimes we want to ram it on them you see the way you tell people about your best friend can pick their interest sometimes we have people coming to tell people about Jesus and they are more religious than the, the people really want oh you need to be saved you need Jesus right now the people are like oh no that's too much for me so the, the way to do it is this. Just take them out to dinner. Just love them. So I want to tell about my best friend. He is so good to me. That's it's just like, you see, it's just a simple thing. Don't make it religious. I can't stand religion. Yeah. So just tell them, you know, I have I have an amazing friend. I want to introduce you to my friend. He has been so good to me all. You know, he has helped me. He has built me up. When I was down, when no one knew I could make it, he came to me. He came to me. And and he will help you too. I know you're going through some tough time. You see, that's the same gospel in a simple way. With that sounding, uh, if you die, you die, you go to heaven or hell. Now, they don't want to die. That's so, yeah. you know, it is the goodness of God that brings them to repentance. Not the badness of hell or the devil. Sure. Tell them some good news, you will get good reports. That's it. Don't push them, let them go their own way. In their own way them not push them there's yes. a different leading means from the front i show them the way yes. push them is not god's way that's yes. the devil's way he pushes you okay yes. i hope this helps you guys it helps you guys you want to have another one it says uh this one is one that is asked here it says and they have the question yes. how do you take communion in your house just the same way you take it anywhere else it's very simple after dinner so you don't take communion when you're because of hunger Right. You take communion because of revelation. Mm -hmm. See, you can do that as many times as possible because in the in the in the um, the Bible says in the New Testament they broke bread, which is called breaking of bread of communion. They broke bread from house to house and publicly. Mm -hmm. Today we make it in church a special occasion. It is supposed to be a lifestyle based out of revelation. If you're feeling a little sick, when you break bread, you should get healed. Because you are partakers of the God life. Yes. So you're recalling his death until it comes. What his death purchases for you. Mm -hmm. Until he shows up. But what do you do? You do the same thing you do everywhere else. You break the bread. And you pick, take a part of it. You eat it. You're eating your healing. When you take the cup. The cup. The cup. The cup. When you take the cup. It is the cup of the new agreement. The new covenant in his blood. That tells you your sins are paid for in full. It's a new agreement. The all is gone. So when you take that, it cleanses your conscience. It cleanses you of all evil conscience. All the things about, oh, I'm not worthy, it's gone. You come because that cup. He said, don't drink it unworthily. Drink it with the sense of your worth. Okay. Does that make sense? That makes absolutely okay, sense. Okay, lovely yes. people. Okay, go ahead. More questions. So another question is, how... Can you stay relevant in a ministry? How can you stay relevant in a ministry? Or how can your ministry stay relevant? Those are two questions. That's true. Yeah. So how do you stay relevant to a ministry? It's very simple. Contribute to the ministry. Contribute to the mission of the ministry. Mm -hmm. And how can your ministry stay relevant to the people? Make sure that you are meeting the needs of the people. Relevance, you see, don't look for significance. Some people want to be, I want to be big, I want to be this, I want to be that. Mm -hmm. Don't do that in ministry. Seek for relevance and significance will find you. Amen. See, most people, 
their biggest problem is they are so busy trying to build their ministry. They want to be big. They want to do things, big things. But hear this, folks. Just do the simple things that God has told you to do. The big things will happen. Stop Amen. trying to stress your life. Oh, and the thing is, let me add to this. Stop comparing yourself with other ministries and ministers. You are one of a kind. I see people get stressed. Oh, my friends are doing this. Thank God for them. They might be running a sprint. You're running a marathon. So know the race you're running. The Bible says, the race that is set before me. Not the race that is set before somebody else. Yes. Stop running other people's race and stop... Just stay on your own lane, you'll be okay. I hope this helps you folks. Okay. Can this video one is it all? We have uh, Dragos. I look forward to seeing you, my friend. Amen. I hope this is helping you guys, right? Okay, go ahead. More questions. It's just a follow up question or yeah, question, comment, however. Go ahead. To what you said before. Is it like that that you should um improve your strength is instead of looking to your weeks to weaknesses yeah to weaknesses when you are about the question how can you stay relevant in the ministry how can you stay relevant to the ministry you know see you always strengthen see what you do is we always say st staff s-t-a-f-f -F, staff your weaknesses that means get a staff to handle your weakness mm -hmm. focus on your strength or staff right. your weaknesses yes. in other words have people smarter than you in that area let them handle business for you you and know one of the one of the privileges and joy i have is having you handling things because in areas of branding and all those things you are very good at it and Thank i you. i really don't have to say much you just come up with ideas and i like them i i never when you handling business i don't have to worry about things i just know she's going to give you something amazing <laughs> she <you>. is amazing <laughs> she's amazing okay yeah okay so let's get some more good questions you, you guys can ask your questions in line also right thank you guys for letting us know the sound is back and it's good i hope the sound is fine okay let's keep moving on let's keep moving on yes. so the next question is where do angels like guardian angels for example who come on earth live where do guardian angels that come on earth live Okay, they live in my neighborhood. If you want to see them, come around me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I'm not really kidding, though. <laughs> you see, the idea is simple this. It's simple this. Angels are all around us. The Bible says, be kind to strangers, because some people have done that and have entertained angels unawares. Angels can come like humans to us. See? So just be nice to people. Angels are all around us all the time. You see, I don't think angels are looking for a place to sleep and all of this. Maybe they might come to your house and say, I want to sleep. They don't live in your body. They live somewhere, but God will send them. You see, angels, the Bible says they are ministering spirits to the ace of salvation. Sometimes they take different forms. They can come to you in the form of a man or a woman. It doesn't matter what it is. But they're not really gender, genderized, quote unquote. They're not male or female angels. They're just angels. So they can come in different forms. So because they are spirits and spirit has no spirit gender. has no form whatever form the spirit comes in they are ministering spirit it's just an expression a case okay to express the spirit yeah i hope that makes sense and they don't need a body to live on earth right that's a no but when they want to come to communicate to you then they can appear in a dream or a vision or in person it doesn't matter yeah so when they appear in a dream or a vision they don't need a body they just appear in the dream or vision does that make sense absolutely and Rekha goes i'm definitely an angel i have blue eyes I'm <laughs> 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 only you Rekha. <laughs> princess Rekha, you are funny <laughs> Is that what we are <laughs> yes you are you are I an angel she's laughing right now. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> oh my goodness I have the best people <laughs> I have the best people wonderful okay let's go on let's go on. Yes. okay let's let's have a, another question go ahead yes somebody was asking this person would like to know if you pray night in tongues or how much time do you spend daily reading the Bible and what time do you suggest would be the best time 
Okay, you can do that schedule. 26 hours a day. <laughs> oh no, oh, it's only 24 hours. So I guess yeah. you, did, you didn't really cut the, 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 you didn't make the team. They are those that want to read 26 hours a day. Do you know that in the New Testament, they did not have the New Testament to read from? Mm -hmm. Paul was yeah. still writing it. How did they do it? They learned the word by oral tradition and the books that were written. They had the Torah, they had the Talmud, they had all of those things. They were referring back to what they knew when they were children. So when Paul was saying grace and peace be multiplied, he actually found that in Daniel. I found it too. <laughs> that guy's so smart. That's good. So a lot of the things you're reading in the New Testament were actually in the Old Testament, but with the light of revelation, it came alive. So the word is in you. That's why the word should be in you. So don't just read scriptures. Let Jesus, the word, become alive in you. So daily you chew on that word. You meditate on that word. So it's not about reading 10 chapters a day. You can read 10 chapters a day and get nothing out of it. You can read for 10 hours and get nothing out of it. I want, whenever I read the word of God, let it be like I'm eating some nice, good food. Food. I want to savor it. I want to enjoy it. I want to become a part of it. I want to become one with it so that when I tell you about my experience with that word, I can tell you it was so good. <laughs> oh boy, I like it. Now, I don't want to make you hungry right now. Okay, let's keep moving. Let's go. <laughs> I hope you're having fun today. And we have a question here. How can one, how could one handle the late, especially where they have been the trend in one's family lineage. The difference between seasons is an instruction. Coming from God? Yes. It's your obedience to that instruction. When God is about to move you through seasons, He'll bring a person that will come and give you an instruction. And if you obey the instruction, it, it speeds up the process. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes, that makes sense. So, your, if there's delay, Sometimes God says, go across the street. You're praying, praying, and praying. Go across the street. Sow the seed. God tells us, sow a thousand dollars. Oh, Lord, you know, I don't, you're making excuses. Just do it. Don't you know that God knows you have needs before you try to explain to him? That's true. Just sow the seed. Oh, Lord, but you know, you know, I have this need. Oh, hello? Your father knows you have needs before you said it. But first seek the kingdom. And you're placing it. Everything else you're looking for is added. It's added. You don't seek for it. I think it's too easy because we are trusting too much on our abilities. Mm -hmm. Not on his ability. He just needs your availability, not your abilities. He has all the abilities for your availability. Does that make sense? Amen. So your delays are not denials. Sometimes, you see, there's a different when there's a delay and when you need patience. Two different things. You need patience. When there is patience, it's not necessarily a delay. The Holy Spirit is already working in you to give you patience. But the purpose of patience is to clear out all the problems ahead of you. God tells you, go and possess the land, but they are giants. And God says, wait here, let's take care of the giants. Does that make sense? He says, wait here, let's take care of the giants. Now I'm going to give you instruction. The, the, the wall is going to fall down. So march around the wall, the city, seven days, seven times on the last day, and then shout. Crazy instruction, isn't it? Crazy instruction. But when you obey the instruction, it moves you closer to the miracle you need. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Yes. Okay. So I hope that helps you with nice people. Yes. So we go back to patience again. Mm-hmm. That's good. So, what questions do we have? We have another one, which it's kind of a statement first and then a question. Go ahead. This person would like to know more to get into the Word. Like the apostles who lived together in the first time <coughs> and they were sharing everything and they depended on each other. This person That's called community. Yes. And this person remembers that Mark Cole gave this person a word to sit alone in a chair and drink coffee and spend time alone with God before others get up. He did and he did in a certain place. This person was working a lot. Mm -hmm. So that's why this person couldn't hear immediately 
but tried to hear when he was free. It's going good, just where there was much with the medicine to remember. So this person really needed the Holy Spirit and want to know the Spirit more and trust Him. So How can this person do that, to trust Him more? To trust the Holy Spirit? Yeah. Just trust Him. Yeah. <coughs> it's not a rocket it's science. It's very easy saying. It's very simple. How do I trust Him? Trust Stop being him. afraid. Yeah. Trust Him. Yeah. Now, how do you trust somebody? You make a choice. I'm going to trust you. So it's not like, hmm, the way I trust him done. Just make a choice. I trust you, Holy Spirit. You're not lying to me because he says in his word. God says in his word. He says, if a child asks for a fish, would they be given a snake? Yeah. If they ask for bread, would they be given stone? If you, being evil, know how to give good gifts, even if the, the criminal gives good gifts to his kids, That's how true. much more your heavenly father, who is a good God, and he wants to give you all things to enjoy. I think that's an amazing thought. Studio audience, don't you think that? Yes. Oh, yes, okay. absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, we have people Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Can I come back to this Go ahead. and put it in another way? That first make the choice and then put aside your. Mm, your physical brain kind that you can make yourself <coughs> available to the Holy Spirit? Yes, the Bible says trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Mm -hmm. In all your ways acknowledge him or accept the knowledge of him. Yes. And then he will direct your path. Amen. That's the scripture tells you right there. You know, sometimes people they want to I want to meditate on that scripture. Don't meditate upon it. Just take it like it is. I acknowledge him, Lord, I thank you. I trust your voice. I'm going to do what you say. Get up and go across the street. Go give the guy five bucks. Oh, Lord, would you not? Just give him five bucks. It's my money anyway. Go do, do it. Right. Now, God doesn't talk like that. <laughs> we talk like that. God will say to you, the Holy Spirit will say to you, go and give them what you have. Go and give them $100. Mm -hmm. Just obey. When you release it, he'll release money back to you. Amen. God knows what you need. Yeah. That's go ahead. true. Go ahead. More questions? Yes, there is another one. This person likes... No, we already had that one. So how are you folks doing in uh, the Facebook land? I hope that you all are doing well. And uh, letting you know, if you have questions, ask them. We need more questions. And that's what we can do. And by the way, um, I've been considering... What we'll do is this. We'll do the Q&A once a week. Mm -hmm. From next week, we're starting to do it once a week, and we'll do it maybe on Thursdays. Mm -hmm. And that way we can focus. We have been very, very, very busy. I would love to spend more time with you and talk to you about um, some of the Q&As that you've had in the past. And we are making a mini, kind of a mini book out of a Q&A, answering some of those questions. We'll make sure we can have that ready for you. But also, for those that are coming to Power School, we have those books available to you. When you come to Power School, we have amazing books available to you. We have some of them downloadables. We're getting those books ready for you. Uh, we've Amen. been doing a lot of hard work. Corinne has been very diligent, yes. setting all those things in place. Uh, Princess Reka and everybody on the team working very, very diligently together. Uh, we have our music coming up. Mm -hmm. We have our different music CDs coming up. I want to encourage you, be a part of something bigger and greater. Amen? Now, we have another question here. Uh -huh. How to hear the Holy Spirit clearly all the time? It comes from fellowship. Now, I can say to you that you, you can tell my voice anytime because right. we've spent a lot of time yes. doing things, ministering, traveling. It's come from, from fellowship. When you have koinonia with, with, with the Holy Spirit, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, you get to know the person's voice. You see, if you've been around a friend for a long time, you get to know their voice. It's mm -hmm. called relationship. Some people want to talk to the Holy Ghost once a year. You won't recognize his voice. The Bible says there are many voices in the world. That's so true. Hello, Lola Day. How are you? Welcome to the Family Forum q and I want you guys, all of you, to send your questions today and we'll get some good answers. There is another one from Princess Rekha. Uh -huh. <laughs> Please tell us how you got your superpowers. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Nita says, great, <laughs> good one, <laughs> Princess. You guys, I'm so happy with family. <laughs> 
Okay, and now let's do the African way. Do you want me to tell the African way? <laughs> Please go ahead. Well, it all began when I was three. That's how we Africans tell our stories. Mm -hmm. I was up in the mountains and a blue cloud and a red one came and talked to each other. Now, that's nonsense. <laughs> you see, this is the kind of stories people hear all the time and you go, oh my God, I will never be able to get that. Mm -hmm. Now, if I told you something very simple, he gave it to me, people said, that's it? You didn't work for it? No. Freely was I given. I freely give it away. I received it freely. Because it gave it freely. It gave it because of love. Love gives. Right. You see, it's so interesting. You know, when people ask, so man of God, how did you have this power? They want me to say some crazy story like I was fasting for 80 days mm. and in the, in the desert of Dubai with an SUV. Now, I can tell some crazy stories like that. But that's a lie. I did not earn anything. Everything I have from God was a gift from him. I am bound to tell you the truth. The Father loves me. The Bible says he has given us all things to enjoy. Then why are we going to make it up look like we earned it? That's religion. I dare to believe what he tells me. If he tells me you're more than a conqueror, I just say wow to that. Wow. So when you talk about having superpowers, <laughs> I have it though. <laughs> and I like it. You can enjoy it with me. Amen. Amen. I see <laughs> you guys. You guys are amazing. I want questions. <laughs> Ask us. Do you have more questions? I do have. A Please go ahead. <laughs> Sarah is asking, how do you stay looking so young? <laughs> There's a secret ingredient. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> now some people would take me really serious you see people tell stories like this he said i found it i, I discovered the fountain of youth mm -hmm. for Amen. with him is the fountain of life but that's the truth when you are in christ you're still fresh and young all the time yes see yes. that's what people don't understand when you are in christ you stay fresh see when you're doing things in your own strength you wear yourself out when you're doing things that's in true. his strength he is never worn out you see, think about the, the, when, when Moses was in front of the burning bush. Yes. And what happened? The bush was being burned, but it was not consumed. Mm -hmm. That's the same thing with us. We are being used of God, but we're not consumed. Why? It's supernatural strength coming to us. Amen. So, in fact, you start getting younger. You start looking mm -hmm. at, but I'm young, though. <laughs> Just to let you know. Amen. I Amen. am very... Yeah. Studio audience, be quiet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think the studio people are very happy about that, you know, praise God. <laughs> I hope you guys are get, getting this. Just hush, people. <laughs> oh, I think the Q&A today is getting to, to be too much fun. You guys, you guys instigate things, I know. <laughs> we do have another one. I'm repeating a question I asked before. When you preach and teach apostle, you make... It sounds so easy, like sow seeds and you will repeat or accept reap, his grace. Reap uh, or reap, expect. I'm sorry. Or expect his grace and he will provide. Yet in reality, it's not easy. One can be sowing seeds for years. See, when I said, listen, it says one can be sowing seeds for years or trusting the promise of God. And yet in my case, for example, I'm not seeing miracles, no easy answers. This There's always something that's working against my answers. Let me explain to you. When God tells you today to sow a seed today, don't say, I sowed it last year. That's why some people don't get it. When God says, sow now, he didn't say, well, you, you sowed it last year. Yes, that's true. A farmer that wants to plant seeds always thinks about the future. Now, God says, sow now. You say, but I planted it 10 years ago. That was 10 years ago. That's why the Bible tells you, in the morning, sow your seeds. In the evening, don't withhold your hand. So people would hold their hand, and some, some people ask the question, when I said, sow a seed to this ministry, you said, but I sow seeds all the time. I did not say, do you sow seeds all the time? You sow into the grace you're receiving from. That's if you're not yes. sowing into the grace you're receiving from, it's like eating at McDonald's and paying at KFC. Mm -hmm. It doesn't That's work that way. Yeah. 
God cannot be mocked. Whatever you sow, you should reap. So if you're sowing somewhere else, you're supposed to reap from there. But you can't sow there and reap here. So when I'm speaking the word here, you've got to sow here. That is scripture and that's straight. Amen. I hope that helps you. So the question I ask is, you're sowing continuously. Let me ask you a direct question. When was the last time you actually sowed a, a tangible seed to this ministry? Let me take it up directly. When was the last time you sowed? Yeah. Because when people sow, we can tell. And Pastor Don says we're not aging, we're perfecting. I like, I like that. Yes. Does that make sense? Yeah. So the question is, because you sowed somewhere else, it's like planting in Dubai and wanting to get a harvest in the United States. It doesn't work that way. So I have to be sometimes very direct and practical so that people understand that God cannot be mocked. Yeah, this so, is true. Am I, am I yeah, making sense? Absolutely. I cannot You're go right. by the seeds I sowed last year in yes. a different ministry and I'm hearing a different ministry teaching something right now. You know, uh, McDonaldo, Apostle McDonaldo. First time I met him, we were in Miami yes. and I was the key speaker in that meeting. Mm -hmm. So he came that morning and he was sharing. So he, okay. um, Apostle McDonaldo was, uh, uh, McDonaldo, he was sharing and it was so good mm -hmm. and i had a thousand dollars in my pocket i am the main speaker yes. he shared as he was coming i just hugged him and i gave him the, all the money in my pocket i sold to him immediately Amen. because what he said i wanted to become a partaker of what he just said yes now i didn't say well i i saw all the time no that's not an attitude the attitude is to fulfill the word of the word of god if somebody is teaching the Bible says if somebody gives you spiritual food they ought to receive material blessings from you but if you're not sowing to them God cannot be mocked it's when you when you are sowing or when you sow is it also a matter of the heart if you just give because you have to give or you think you have to give or give out of revelation yes and the thing is you gave your seed an assignment Amen. <clears throat> the Bible says seed time harvest so there's in between seed and time there's harvest so you said i've been sowing for years so you're expecting what you sow now i think now we don't want to make it a personal thing mm -hmm. now about uh, somebody sowing three weeks ago that was three weeks ago three weeks ago give it time i can assure you the word of god comes to pass Amen. i've said to some people remember when we had the 30 days of glory in boston i threw a challenge around the world i said if you can come to the meeting for 30 days if you do not get healed if your problems are not solved in 30 days of continuous meeting wherever you came from around the world i will pay your transportation back to that place Amen. for 30 days we didn't pay one cent why some of them we healed the first week some of them healed the second week by the third week everybody was healed by the fourth week it was cruise control everybody was healed Amen. the churches in boston ran away from us they said you're crazy how can you promise people that i know what we have works Amen. So when I tell people sow your seed, God will keep his word. If not, you can get your money back. Mm -hmm. But you've got to prove to us you sow the seed in faith. Follow the condition of the word of God. Yeah. Why? Get the weeds off your seed. Mm -hmm. What is the weed? Worries. Some people worry about everything. That's true. You cannot be worried about everything. You cannot be worried about everything. I hope that helps you. We have another one here. It says, uh, please... Uh, Please share the secret to how to see the word of God manifest in our lives. Okay, let me give you that one straight up. The way it comes to pass is simple. Let the word become flesh in you. Get up and act on that word. Amen. And it's done. Simple as it is. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So we don't participate with aging. <laughs> we step off of man's timeline into God's timeline. Amen. Hallelujah. Doing the will of God and obeying the word of God. Let me tell you, doing the will of God requires dying to self. See, it's easy when you're dead to yourself. So let me get that clear, clearly because I'm reading and I'm thinking and I'm talking. Let me explain to you. The question here, the statement here is, what I mean to say is, even when doing the will of God and obeying his word, still it's not easy. Now, it will not be easy if your old man is still trying to do it. Mm -hmm. If you're dead and the new man is alive, it's easy. But you still have a bit of the old nature in your mindset. Not in your spirit, in your mind. 
You need to renew your mind and line up with the Word of God. See, I'm an engineer. I like facts. So if I come to the Word of God, I don't deal with facts. I deal with reality. Amen. Facts are changeable. Truth never changes. That's so true. See, the fact is you weren't broke. And the fact changed, you became broke. And the fact is subject to change. You're not going to be broke anymore. When truth meets facts, facts will change. Amen. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, it says, please, what is number one, one success secret? Jesus. Yeah. Let that word become alive to you. Am I right? Jesus is the number one success secret. Meditate on the word, Jesus. Day and night. He is the success secret. The success secret. It's not a big deal. It's not like, uh, see, once you have Jesus, the Bible says, in him I hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So wisdom is the principal thing. But in him I hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So when you have him, you have wisdom. You have him, you have knowledge. You have him, you have you know, understanding. The man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. Hallelujah. Are you, are you enjoying this? It says, I'm not only talking about material habit. I'm talking about healing, experience the promise of God, divine help, my marriage, and everything. Listen, everything God has spoken to you is real. Your facts are changing. But stop whining and complaining about it. I, I don't mean to be hard. But the thing is, when we have so much worries about the seed, have you ever planted a seed and then go and dig it up? every five minutes it's not growing you're gonna kill that seed that's true see that's what the bible says in mark chapter 4 it says the kingdom of god is as if a man plants a seed in the ground goes to sleep at night when you're sleeping you don't think about the seed you're resting and you rise up in the morning and the seed is growing by itself and you yourself have no clue how it's going why seeds are designed to grow but if you keep digging up that seed and worrying about that seed, you will not make it grow any faster by digging it up. You're going to kill it. Let the seed produce. So you have to understand also about seeds. There are different kinds of seeds. The Bible says let every seed reproduce after its kind. There are certain seeds that grow in a day or two or three. It starts growing out. Some three weeks, four weeks. But bamboo spent four years underneath the ground. A bamboo tree. Four years you don't see it. In the fifth year it shoots higher than those things that have been growing for five years. So it's been growing underneath the ground. That's a different seed. Mm -hmm. So but you have to understand how it works. I hope that helps. That means we have different seeds and all the seeds have a different time to grow. That's and right. Before. That's right. So don't compare every seed as if it's the same. Yes. Corn and wheat have different different mm -hmm. growth rates. That's true. Same thing with uh, um, if you have... Um, uh, potatoes yes. will not grow at the same rate. Some things are easily harvested. Some things grow for the long haul. Yes. But you have to know the difference. That means again, be patient with some things. Yes. And we have uh, we have good comments by uh, uh, um, Director Rick, as He says That's you have to sow into good grounds. Mm -hmm. Okay. And. Um, uh, Christopher Wetland, that's um, my, my grandson, says, So to the grace you're receiving from. God cannot be mocked. It's now word. That's correct. Amen. It says, Now, but the thing is, you're worrying too much because every time you talk to me, you're talking about problems. Uh, and sure, Jin says, I've sown bamboo seeds, I guess. No. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, son. <laughs> oh, I'm having so much. I hope you guys are having fun. This is, this is family. <laughs> this is daddy talking to you. And uh, you're, you're asking some great questions. There. So come on. I like the conversation. Keep it coming. Bring it on. Hallelujah. So I like that. You're sowing bamboo seeds. That's good. It's going to take off. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready for something good to happen hallelujah amen so now i need some questions come on folks <laughs> just to make an, uh, a comment about um complaining apostle had lately uh 30 days of no complaints. no complaints yeah 
maybe you can remember that and add that to your life. Yes. And not only for 30 days, continue. 30 days was the rest. start. Yes. No more whining. I yeah. put a sign in front of my preaching from now on. <laughs> Graphic preacher. No whining. <laughs> if you whine, there's a finger that says, I want you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, but I think it's a good thing to remember that because how many times do we <laughs> complain without any real reason? Uh, I have Dragon says, <laughs> he's in New Zealand. I love you so much. <laughs> he said he runs to the office and watch the replay later. It's 7 a.m. in New Zealand. Okay. <laughs> we love you too. We can't wait to see you in a power school. He's coming oh, to power yes. school. Oh, really? I love you. Yes, That's he's coming. Awesome. He's coming to power school. He says, So, Apostle, do you mean there's nothing such as resistance in the spirit? The enemy fighting our destiny answers? Sometimes it's our ignorance that's fighting us. Yes. See, the, let me explain this. You have to understand because I'm, I, I don't do all this nonsense stuff. You see, there's a lot of nonsense that's gone on in Christianity that doesn't make any sense at all. That's true. See, your ignorance is the greatest resistance to your destiny. Mm -hmm. My people perish for lack of knowledge. Without yes. the vision, the people perish. Not because of the devil. He's defeated. See, the enemy of your soul would only put things in your mind. The war is between your earlobes. That's where the war is, between these two things. Are you with me? Now, the reason I'm sharing this with you is so that you will have a better understanding of how the Word of God works. Amen. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Pastor Rona says, your ignorance is the greatest resistance to your destiny. That's right. That's mm -hmm. so true. Yes, and so the kingdom, hear this, it says, uh, the kingdom suffered violence, and violent people take it by force. Now, let me explain that scripture with clarity, with understanding. Mm -hmm. See, one thing is to quote the Bible, another thing is to understand. Because the Bible says hearing, and they understand not. Yes. Seeing, and they are blind to it. You see, because you have a sight does not mean you can see clearly. Does that make sense? You can miss a lot of things you see. Mm -hmm. See, hear this. Most times when you talk about taking it by force is taking what God has said, believing it against every evidence in the physical. Of course, your evidence in the physical is always contrary to the word of God. Whenever God speaks a promise, do you know that the word of God must be tested? Yes. Does that make sense, right? Yes. The word must be tested. Why? Your faith must be put into trial. It has to prove that that word is real. Real faith is always tested. The trial of a faith. It means it must go through a test to prove that is the real thing. So that's normal. See, the enemy will want to cause you to think that it's not for you. That's the fight you fight. Fight the good fight of faith. It's a good fight because you already won. You can't say it's a good fight and I lost. It doesn't work that way. It's only a good fight. You see, we're not running the race to win. We are running because we already won. We are running just to finish and hand it back. It's like Houston Bolt. Houston Bolt is running and he just looks at you just to finish. That's how you're running now. Are you catching this now, right? Okay, I hope this is helping you folks. It says, an effectual door has been opened to us, but the, he said, we have but resistance of many. Yes, why? Because of the mindset. Do you know the greatest resistance is how people think? So, when there's a principality in an area, it's the mindset that controls that area. For example, if you go to a place where you have secular humanism, mm -hmm. that's the principality of humanism. They don't believe in the supernatural. They believe in man. Everything is because of man. Man is all. Man is this. Man is that. Secular humanism and take the supernatural out of it. So, that's the mindset that's coming against what you're teaching. Mm -hmm. But how do you deal with it? We have the key. We have the power. One miracle ends all the arguments. How do we convince the people? We convince them by miracle signs and wonders. And that's it's Romans 15, 18. He said, I've been able to make the non-believers obey the gospel by signs and wonders and diverse gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. By demonstration of power and the spirit. Mm -hmm. their, their faith is not on men's wisdom, but on the power of God. I hope this is helping you guys. We have Pastor Obina. Welcome on board. 
Hallelujah. Are you with me? I hope you get the point. Uh, see, if there's opposition, blast your way through with the word of God. How do you deal with lies? Blinded with the truth. Blinded with the truth. Oh boy. Amen. I think you stood up a pot there. Hallelujah. <laughs> Don't get me going. Okay, I'll behave myself. I'll behave myself. Okay, so let's keep going with this. Never waste your time on religious activities that has no no real no activities that has no real uh, tangible uh, value. I don't want to go and fast and pray when there's no value to it. I want to fast and pray and get something out of it. Does that make Amen. sense? Yes. Amen. It's called revelation. Yes. I miss you. <laughs> Is it possible to mix the medicine I'm studying with the Word of God? Of course it's possible. Do you know why you study medicine? To find the limitations of people. Do you know why you study the Word of God? To break through the limitations of people. That is true. That is so true. I have my lovely I studio audience getting excited. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> we have a, a live audience with lots of cameras. So those on Facebook don't really get to see all the cameras we have. We don't just have cameras for Facebook. We have cameras for television. We have cameras for live stream. So yeah. for those of you that are watching, there is more than what you can see. Okay, so... <laughs> My goodness, yeah, my goodness, the resistance of me. How do you deal with resistance? Persistence, where is that resistance? It's very simple. Be consistently consistent. Don't back down because there's resistance. You see, you are designed to win. So act like you're winning already. Go ahead and make the plants like you already won. Make the plants as if the baby's already dead. Abraham, being not weak in faith, did not consider the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not consider that the womb was dead. Did not consider it. You don't consider your situation. You consider the word of God. Amen. Does that make sense? Yes. We don't look at the things we see. We look at the things that are unseen. Does that help you? Put your faith, uh, act, faith in, in action. In action. That's simple. Pray. Don't stay there and, and cry. Yeah. No whining. Just keep shining. I think that's a slogan. Amen. Okay, let's go for it. <laughs> Derek, Derek, do a spin around. Hallelujah. I've been consistent for many years. Well, how do you know you're consistent? So we're having our, 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 our counseling session now with Nina. Nina, Nina, we go along. I love this video. Now hear this. This is very important. How do we know? that you, you've been consistent. You cannot be saying you're consistent when you're complaining about it. Amen. Complaining is a sign that you don't trust. That's I have to give it straight to you. Yeah. When you complain, the Bible says the people murmured. When they murmured, the journey got longer. He said, go, go and read Hebrews. Mm -hmm. They died in the wilderness because they were murmuring. Check it again. That's the word. Don't murmur. Just go for it. <laughs> Nita said, I'm not judging. I'm just giving the word. The Bible actually tells you, make righteous judgment. I'm not judging you. I am going by the word. Let's compare the word, scriptures upon scriptures. So when people say, don't judge me, it's a statement that sometimes, I know she's kidding now. Yes. I, uh, Nita, I know, I, we understand that. She's probably smiling now. Now, but hear this. I never judge you. I'm not a judge of you. But the word of God is the judge. So what I'm doing is bringing what you say and line it with the word. I am not judging you. The word of God is sorting you out. So that is called making a righteous judgment. It's not making a judgment based on what Apostle Dr. Charles and Deacon feels. It's irrelevant how I feel. I didn't feel true. like smacking some people, but you can do it. You go by the word. I hope that helps you folks. <laughs> She's smiling. <laughs> I love Q&A. This is where it's called rapid fire. Are, are, you, are you with me? So we have three minutes. You've got to make it a, a, a lovely three minutes now. Okay. He said, Hannah complained and cried. Now, Hannah did not complain. 
She cried. She brought her request. She requested from the Lord. She said, Lord, I want a child to serve you. She was making an offer to God. She was making God a deal. She's not complaining. She knew she wanted something. The husband gave her things. She wasn't satisfied with that. She said, I don't want things. I want to give birth. There was something in her that wanted to give God something. She said, give me my first son, Samuel. That's the name when he was born. He says, give me my first son and I will give him to you. Lord, I want to give you something from my womb. That was her prayer. She was not complaining, Lord, Lord, you know, I, no, no, said, I want to give you something. That's a whole request. She was making a request. She loved the Lord so much. She wanted to produce a, a something to the Lord. Look at it from that perspective. It's not a complaint. Of course she was barren. Of course she was been laughed, by other, laughed at by other people. But her approach was, Lord, open my womb. The one that opens my womb, he's yours. That's called making a deal with God. When you tell God, I'm going to give you the first fruit. Amen. That's, that's a good deal. God just smiled and said, okay, you understand me. <laughs> Are you getting it? Oh. <laughs> Nita, don't worry. I love you. And I want you to know that there is something in you that wants to give God something great. I know that. And I don't want you worried about things. But I like the rapid fire. It's a lot of fun. You see, I'm one person that doesn't back away because things get heated. I want to help you. My heart's desire is for you to do so well in this life reigning with jesus in this life mm -hmm. in a mighty way that's the reason why we do what we do amen are you are you, are you hearing me are you hearing me so we have about 15 seconds 15 seconds <laughs> we better make it a good one by the way register for power school pson.org power school of miracles register there it is filling we have limited space left and uh, this is the beginning of June. You don't, you don't want to miss it. The hotels are filling up very fast. We have special rates at the hotel. You want to do it as quickly as possible. Oh, Nita, come on, don't take it personal. You brought it on, remember? She didn't bring it on. We love you. This is family. The people that are always in this forum are part of our family, okay? Amen. There's nothing personal. I know you can handle it, sweetie. You are amazing. You're amazing. Hallelujah. And uh, now we mentioned that the Facebook page for Power School of Miracles, we want to be able to have you get on there and just enter some information and put things. We, want, we will start letting you post things there now. Yes. Okay, we'll make it and set it up in a way you can post things. And if people are interested in sharing hotels with you, you can put it up there. Let's set it up in a way. We're going to be setting it up so that you can be able to do some of those things. Yes, we do that. Okay, that's a good thing to do. All right. So we're going to take care of that. Thank you, Sherjit, for, ask, for, for, for doing that. Okay. So um, how, how is everybody doing? Did you enjoy this today, you folks on Facebook? Uh, Nita says, one thing I can say is that when you are the one in the burning, uh, in, the, in the fire burning, is different. No, no, it's not different. When I'm the one in the fire burning, I get excited. Why? Because somebody's going to join me very soon. His name is called Jesus. Amen. When I'm in the fire I begin to celebrate. Why? I'm, I'm expecting something supernatural to happen. You see, when you're in the fire, he's there with you. See, I think differently. You see, I don't stay in the fire and panic. Oh, I'm in the fire. I say, in the fire, I'm going to sing. <laughs> A fire that burns and never consumes me. Amen. The three Hebrew children prove that. Mm -hmm. It just depends on who you're taking your cue from. I take my cue from the Word of God. See, when I look at the Word of God, that's my standard. So everything I tell you is actually the Word of God. So I'm not saying we are better than you. Nobody's better than anybody. We are all right. in the sight of God as God sees us. But we have discovered what He knows concerning us. We know who we are. We know what we have. So our perspective is seeing things through His view. That's Amen. the difference. I hope you get that. Hallelujah. <laughs> and everybody says they love it. They are. We, we love it. <laughs> Nita, you're adding not just spice, lots of spices. 
to these sessions. We love it. Every time you come on, we have fun. <clears throat> but I'm going to pray for every one of you. And also, every time you hear things, this helps you and your ministry. Every time you hear things like this, I want you to wrap your faith around the seed and say, I'm going to sow a seed for what I've just heard. I want that wisdom to become relevant to me. As a partner in this grace, as a partner in this anointing, it will happen. See, I tell people, God tells us to sow 500, sow it. If it says 100, sow it. No matter what it is, sow it. If it tells you $1, sow it. Just this little steps of obedience opened up on uncommon blessings from heaven. Amen. Are you with me? Are you folks ready? And they have Emmanuel Rema. <laughs> we had a great time last Sunday. He flew all the way from Lagos just to be with me for the Sunday. I want to say I love all of you folks. I love you. I love you. And I pray God's blessings upon you. That his grace and his mercy and his peace be multiplied to you. Because you have a clear knowledge of him. Your eyes of understanding be so filled with revelation and light that you will know all of God's hope for calling you. Your eyes of understanding is filled right now with wisdom and revelation that you walk boldly, you walk circumspectly, you walk as wise men and women. In the name of Jesus, may your days and your evenings and your mornings be blessed, full of his blessings on every side, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We thank you very much again for such a great Q&A session. Yes. And we are looking forward to all the good things God is going to do. Okay? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Love you. We have the audience. <laughs> okay, Charles, we wrap it up. God bless you all. God bless you. We love you.